The hollow ringing balls are also available in the cloisonné style, which is a process involving detailed copper and enamel work. I'm frequently asked how these cloisonné masterpieces are made, and the answer to that question just so happens to be the next part of our tour. I recently had the pleasure of traveling to Baoding, China, to visit one of the largest manufacturers of cloisonné therapy balls. At the Colored Dragon Iron Ball Factory, each set of cloisonné balls goes through a painstaking 14-step process that is performed almost entirely by hand. First. Various sizes are stamped out to produce a circle, just like this. Step number two, the metal is then pressed into a half of a sphere. This comes out looking just like this, a, a half a sphere. Next, a steel cable wire is wound and cut to form a spring. Step four is the process that enables the balls to produce their unique chime. The spring formed in step three is welded to the inside of one of the half spheres and a metal marble is then placed inside as well. Once the spring and marble are in place, Step five consists of welding the two half spheres together. After the welding process, the ball is very rough around the edge where the half spheres were connected. The grinding process that smooths this edge is step six. Once this is completed, the basic ball is ready for the cloisonné process. Step 7 consists of bending copper wire to form the shapes that will give the cloisonné balls their intricate designs. In this example, the copper is being bent to form the shape of a cloud. Step 8 involves taking the shapes that were formed in Step 7 and attaching them to the ball using glue and a specially designed soft hammer. This worker is setting a moon and stars. With all of the design work being done by hand, you can see why each ball is a one-of-a-kind piece of art. Step 9 is the firing process, where the balls are set. First, the balls are covered in a secret formula. They are then placed in the furnace, which reaches temperatures as high as 900 degrees centigrade. It takes a great deal of experience to oversee this process, since the only way to determine when the balls are ready is by waiting for them to glow the proper shade of red. After the balls have cooled down, the copper is firmly set. Step number 10 is the painting process, where workers pour paint into the form copper patterns. This series of balls will eventually be five color dragons. After all the copper patterns have been filled with the appropriate colors, the excess paint is then scraped off. Step 11 is another part of the coating process. After the background color has been mixed, the balls are submerged and then placed in a mold so they are completely coated and surrounded. Notice how fast the work is done.
After the balls have dried, the molds are cracked open and the balls are ready for step 12, the grinding process. First, the rough grinding clears away all of the large debris. As the ball continues to be ground, the patterns and colors begin to emerge. The pressure applied during the fine grinding, which takes about 45 seconds per ball, is what brings out the designs to their fullest. It also brings out the initial shine. Step 13 is the polishing process. As you can see, after being hand polished, the balls come out with a brilliant finish. Finally, the balls are cleaned and examined, coated in enamel, and placed on three pins, where they will dry for approximately four to six hours. Once the balls have finished drying, they are then placed in an intricately designed presentation box and shipped to destinations around the world. As you can see, there are almost as many different box designs as ball designs.